hi medical student everywhere my name is Abu Abayda Balla from Najran University College of Medicine pathology department this will be a quick brief talk about cell injury quick and concise talk so I will go over this point as you see here the first one is definition of cell injury number two what are the causes of cell injury number three what are the mechanism of cell injury number four here what are the morphological changes which take place within the cell due to cell injury? Let us start by the first point here. What is the definition of cell injury? Cell injury, actually, it is a series of functional and structural defects that take place within the cell due to stress on this cell. This stress, if this is a cell and subjected to a specific stress, whether this stress, this stress may be mild or moderate or severe, According to the degree of this stress, the morphological changes will take place here. So, whatsoever this cause, how much this cause is, the result is structural changes within the cell. This is called cell injury. So, what are the causes of this stress? Okay, stress. So, actually, here we have different causes and various causes for this stress. Number one, the first one is hypoxia hypoxia what does it mean hypoxia it means lack of oxygen to the specific area or reduction of oxygen to the specific tissues so hypoxia i will talk about it furthermore after finishing all the causes of this hypoxia number two infection as you see here infection is an important cause of stress to the cell whatsoever the cause of this infection is maybe bacterial bacterial or viral infection or parasite or whatsoever it's the cause may be fungal or other type of microorganism whatsoever the inf infection is it's a stress may be mild may be moderate may be severe according to the degree according to the duration of time it will give us here some morphological changes we will talk about it uh, later on number two Number three, I mean genetic disorder. Genetics disorders or genetic stress like Down syndrome. If you know Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, all of these syndrome have a, some sort of genetic disorder and accordingly there is some sort of cell stress in their bodies. Uh, for example, Down syndrome are subjected to a lot of diseases like leukemia and other malignancies. So this is a stress, genetic stress. Number four, immunological stress. Immunology. Immunological stress. Also, immunological stress may be stress on the cell and the result of that cell injury. Whatsoever this immunological reaction is, maybe hypersensitivity reaction type one, type two, or three, or four, whatsoever is, or autoimmune diseases. Okay? So, uh, all of these will have uh, some sort of or some kind of stress on the cell. And the result of that is cell injury. Number five here, chemical agent. That is to say, for example, poisoning. Poisoning. Or toxins. Or alkalis. Or uh, acids. All of these are chemical, which may result in some sort of, hype, uh, some sort of destruction to the cell and cell injury. Physical agent. Number six here, let us say, physical physical agent like temperature uh, electricity radiation whatsoever the radiation is maybe uh, atomic radiation maybe only x-ray radiation and stuff like that also this is uh, stress on the cell so uh, further maybe nutritional condition number seven here or let us put it here seven nutrition nutritional disorder what do we mean by saying nutritional disorder maybe uh, for example look, lack of a specific nutrition like malnutrition and starvation stuff like that uh, quashicor marasmus and so on or maybe overload for example vitamin overload or obesity as a cause of uh, some sort of i mean nutritional imbalance let us say nutritional imbalance whether increased or decreased okay so let us go over some of these points, especially hypoxia. Actually, hypoxia 
can be caused by a lot of things like cardiovascular diseases, pulmonary diseases, pulmonary lung disorder like pneumonia and, and stuff like that, anemia. Okay, these, these are very important causes for hypoxia. Okay, so this is very important. Let us go over the next point. What are the mechanisms of cell injury? Actually, we have three mechanisms. Let us start by the first one, and it is hypoxia itself. Hypoxia as a mechanism. Hypoxia, I mean cellular hypoxia here. Yeah. As if there is asphyxia, no oxygen to the cell. So what is the result of that, of this hypoxia? No oxygen to the cell. This means that there is another pathway, which is anaerobic glycolysis, will take place within the cell. So the result of that, the pH within the cell will be reduced due to acetosis, formation of lactic acid, more lactic acids. So these lactic acids or this acetosis, cellular acetosis will result in more than thing. The first one and the most important one is disperse of ribosomes. Ribosomes. For example, if this is endoplasmic reticulum, you know that there is ribosomes here in which protein synthesis take place. So these ribosomes will be removed from here due to this acetosis. Also, you know that acetosis will affect the nucleic material, I mean the nucleus here, giving what is called pycnosis, condensation of the nucleic material. Pycnosis, if you remember this. Okay, I will talk about this point in the morphological changes which will take place here within the cell. Okay, so this is hypoxia resulting uh, reduction in pH. Okay, let us go over the next point here. A cellular calcium will be increased. As you see, if this is a cell, and you know this is a nucleus, this is, for example, let us to say, a mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum. You know that intracellular calcium will be released from here and here, from endoplasmic reticulum, endoplasmic reticulum, and from mitochondria. So here, the calcium will be increased due to this stress, whatsoever this stress is. So increased intracellular calcium will result in activation of a lot of intracellular enzymes, which are not active. For example, lipases. Okay, here you see proteases endonucleases all of these enzymes will be activated by high level of calcium and this endonucleases will digest the nucleus lipases will digest the lipid here in the wall okay in the i mean membrane cell membrane proteins will also be digested so activation of this enzyme will be uh, as a result of increased intracellular calcium the last point is formation of free radicals free radicals what are these free radicals and they are formed as a result of this stress especially if severe stress and in cases of chemical agent poisoning and toxins and also sometimes in hypoxia so free radicals like hydrogen peroxide or superoxide or uh, hydroxyl group all of these are free radicals which destroy the membrane whether cellular membrane or organelle membrane inside the cell. So as a result of these mechanisms, there is morphological changes here. And these morphological changes are classified into two types. Number one is called reversible changes. Reversible changes. Number two, irreversible. Irreversible changes. And these are morphological changes which will take place within uh, in the cell. So let us go for this diagram, which will show us two diagram here to compare between reversible and irreversible changes here in cell injury. Uh, this will be a quick and rapid uh, revision for uh, changes which will take place in cases of reversible cell injury and irreversible cell injury. As you see here, we have two diagram. The first one here, you see that these are the reversible changes which take place within the cell. Let us go over them quickly. As you see here, most of these changes are due to accumulation of water and sodium inside the cell. So here we have endoplasmic reticulum swelling, mitochondrial swelling, pale cytoplasm, 
all of these changes are due to accumulation of water and sodium within the cell. Also, we have blips formation here, blipping, so bulging of this membrane, also due to this accumulation of water inside the cell. So the most important reversible changes in cell injury is accumulation of water or hydrobic changes. Sometimes you may, you may find other changes like this one, inclusions here, and sometimes you may find clumping of chromatin. All of these changes will be removed once the stress will, uh, is removed. You know that when cell is subjected to, uh, I mean cell subjected to stress, this cell may show reversible changes. But when the stress is severe, more severe, these changes will be converted to irreversible changes. And this is the point of no return. So the cell when reaching this point, most probably it will go for necrosis. So as you see here, these are irreversible changes. Most of these irreversible changes are defecting the membrane, as you see here. This is membrane defect, cell membrane defect. So everything inside the cell might get outside and something from the environment may enter the cell. Also, even the organelles membrane here will be ruptured. As you see here, rupture of lysosomal body. And due to rupture of this lysosomal body, most probably you will find lysis of endoplasmic reticulum by these enzymes from these lysosomal bodies. Also, even the mitochondria may be lysed, and this is called karyolysis. And there is also sometimes, there is other changes like only fragmentation of the nucleic material or the chromatin. It's called karyorexis. So karyorexis means only fragmentation of the chromatinic material. Also, sometimes you may find pycnosis, as you see here. And this is condensation, as you see here, of the chromatinic material inside the nucleus. Moreover, you may find other changes like myelin figure, as you see here, and condensation in the mitochondria. And these are the most important irreversible changes. As I have said before, and this is a very important point, this is the point of no return. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now.